Hello Finksters and welcome to another episode on uh, Smart Contracts and Solidity. I hope you're doing great. Uh, today's topic is focused on uh, the Ethereum virtual machine, specifically on message calls. Uh, so what are message calls in the EVM? Uh, they are a mechanism for inter-contract communication, meaning that uh, by using message calls we can call uh, to other contracts or we can send Ethereum to non-contract accounts. Of course, uh, there is a similarity with transactions in terms of uh, each transaction is actually wrapped in a message call. So whenever we are uh, making a transaction, we are making a message call in the background. Uh, each new contract call uh, entails new memory instance so uh, it will get a uh, new memory space and uh, this memory space is uh, actually a stack frame with call arguments and also some uh, call related data uh, the common uh, message parameters are uh, message source message target data payload as input data ether gas and of course uh, return data that gets returned uh, to the caller uh, besides that we also have uh, another role of a message call uh, actually i'm sorry another role for contract uh, it it uh, allocates gas or uh, to be specific it sets the amount of gas for inner message calls uh, there can be uh, any amount of gas forwarded to the inner message calls uh, but at most it can it can be uh, so if we uh, divide our initial uh, gas amount to 64 parts we can forward only 63 of those 64 parts so that's the upper limit and any amount below that can be forwarded uh, to the inner message call uh, we also have uh, something interesting that's called exception bubbling up meaning that uh, when an inner message call uh, uh, gets an exception like out of gas exception or any other kind of exception uh, this exception will get uh, returned to the caller and this caller will if we have a chain of callers this caller will again return to his caller and this process is called exception bubbling up so it goes from the inner message call to the outer or upper message call uh, regarding message call allocation as uh, previously mentioned uh, each message call gets a part of memory uh, allocated so uh, this allocation uh, has a duration of a message call and once a message call finishes the memory instance will disappear uh, one more thing uh, memory instance uh, also receives the call payload so when we are uh, uh, making a message call and uh, passing in the parameters this uh, memory instance will accept the parameters and uh, or the call payload in general and uh, it will store it temporarily as i said until uh, the message call completes uh, a few words on call payload and return so function arguments always reside in call data memory area that's a specialized memory area for uh, function arguments uh, we also have call contracts uh, and so when when a call when a contract call uh, finishes it usually returns something and this return will be assigned to the caller's memory so this will uh, be a uh, probably pre-allocated uh, maybe variable or an object that will accept the uh, uh, contract return and assign it to to this uh, address to this caller's memory okay and uh, finally uh, all message calls are synchronous meaning that when we make a message call uh, our uh, 
our execution will pause here and wait until it receives an answer. Regarding message call properties, uh, there are 1024 levels in theory and in practice uh, regarding that uh, that fraction 63 over 64 uh, there's about thousand levels in practice that we can make a message call from a message call from a message call and so on uh, the other thing is uh, message call uh, chaining via recursion is not recommended for array iteration and it's not recommended for complex operations so we should use loops instead this is an important thing to remember uh, here we have a section on uh, special variants of message calls so the first one is called uh, actually it's mnemonic or in documentation you can also find uh, this call code as an operation code uh, so call code is similar to an ordinary message call however uh, the difference is that uh, uh, opposite to, to an ordinary message call here the code of the called uh, contract is executed in in the context of the calling contract so it uh, works like uh, if we copied uh, the code from this other contract and pasted it in our contract and executed it run it here it works like uh, like we have it not like we called it from somewhere else uh, the next point on delegate call it's actually identical to call code but it keeps two variables that's message sender and message value unchanged this enables a library like behavior because it enables dynamic code loading from remote contracts and with that we can make uh, complex data structures and contracts by actually linking uh, outside contracts and uh, and approaching them like they are in our own like their code is in our own contract uh, the next uh, topic is logs so logs are a special indexed structure uh, they enable us to have logging functionality they enable us uh, to implement events we will show how events work in one of the future uh, article overviews actually it will be a code overview uh, they are logs are stored in ethereum blockchain specifically in bloom filters that's also an interesting topic maybe i make an article on bloom filters uh, themselves uh, one more thing, uh, logs can only be accessed from outside the contract and uh, one way to access them is by using light clients, uh, what means that these are the clients that don't download the entire blockchain but uh, only parts of it and these parts are enough to find a specific log and to, to find the information they need or we need when, we'll, when we will be making them. Okay. Uh, the next uh, special message code is uh, create well, I'm sorry message call create it enables us to create a contract and it differs uh, from an ordinary message call uh, by several things first uh, payload data of such of this create message call is treated as code uh, the next thing is uh, payload data is executed upon uh, contract creation and the return data of such contract creation is assigned to a contract address so uh, you can remember from the previous articles and uh, videos when we create an, uh, a contract it uh, gets assigned to a specific address and this address is uh, something that we can uh, hang on to and access our contract as long as it lives and uh, regarding the contract life cycle there is one uh, special message call and one uh, approach self-destruct is a message call and deactivate is not a message call it's actually an approach that I'll explain so <clears throat> 
special operation code self-destruct enables us to destruct a contract. However, when we destruct a contract, it still exists in blockchain history. This is an important thing to remember because if you want to erase uh, a contract from ever existing, you cannot do that. At least not if you're not uh, not doing some kind of attacks and uh, that's 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 not the way to go of course it's uh, it's immoral and illegal and uh, from the other point of view it's very hard to accomplish i've talked about it uh, in two articles ago i think however you can always check uh, blockchain attacks because it's uh, it's important thing to know and be aware of when uh, you are making a contract uh, so self destruct possible origins are from the calling contract we can set this uh, special operation code this message message call in our contract as, or as i mentioned before we can also have it in a remote contract which will call uh, via call code or delegate call there is a danger that when we uh, destroy a contract and uh, someone tries to send some ether to it this ether would be lost forever there is no uh, way of getting it back so a better approach and this is uh, this part of the title which i mentioned it's not a special message call it's an approach a better approach is contract deactivation uh, this contract deactivation works by so we actually code this uh, additional behavior we disable the internal state of the contract uh, for instance by making all functions of a contract reverting so when the functions revert they actually prevent either misplacement by uh, by just uh, uh, giving it, giving it back it doesn't uh, go the ether doesn't go in a place where there's no uh, there's no return from okay and uh, the last uh, title and topic for our uh, for our uh, article overview is pre-compiled contracts so that's a special group of contracts with uh, reserved addresses at locations one through eight uh, here I'd like to point out this 8 is also included it's not like uh, when we were programming and this uh, last number in the range is is uh, not included here we literally have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 8 addresses, addresses that uh, hold our reserved contracts uh, another interesting point is that uh, behavior and gas consumption are not defined by our code by the evm code but instead they are implemented in evm runtime environment so this uh, the code for these contracts is something that is uh, we can say carved in stone in a way at least for a specific version of uh, evm uh, regarding future considerations on this uh, topic, on this note, uh, expected pre-compiled contracts are uh, they are expected to land somewhere in the range between one and not only eight, but in a hexadecimal format FFFF. And uh, there is a possible deviation with EVM compatible chains in terms that. Uh, when an EVM compatible chain uh, gets published, it may have a different uh, set of pre-compiled uh, contracts. So what's uh, on uh, address one in, uh, in let's say uh, EVM version A or EVM variant A, it doesn't have to be uh, the same functionality uh, and uh, gas consumption and behavior in general in, in some other implementation in, uh, let's say, EVMB. Okay, so uh, this was all for, uh, for today for uh, this article's overview. I hope I managed to make it easier for you to follow the article. And uh, 
as always, I'm uh, inclined to, to write it in a way that it's easily readable, that you can learn something new and uh, enjoy while you're doing it. Thank you for your attention and uh, until the next time, bye.